As you might imagine, circuits can get pretty involved. Some cannot be broken down into a simple parallel or series circuit. Luckily, we can use the conservation of charge and the conservation of energy to analyze these more complex circuits. If we look at this particular circuit, we have resistors and batteries all intermingled with each other. You can see how there is no good way to divide this circuit into simpler parts. The good news is that there are a couple rules that we can use to help decipher where the current and resistance and all of the voltage can actually be figured. Kirchhoff's first rule takes the idea that charge is conserved and applies it to the junctions within the circuit. This is called the junction rule, and it makes sense that if current is flowing into a particular junction, then it would have to flow out as well. If we look at the circuit junction labeled A in the diagram, we can see current I1 at 11 amps coming in from the right. When that current hits the junction, it has the option to either go on the wire going up as I2 or on the wire going down as I3. So current 1 splits into two new currents, but the sum of the two new currents must be equal to the initial current coming in. Otherwise, since current is the movement of charges, the charges would start to build up at that junction, and that just doesn't happen. Kirchhoff's second rule applies to the conservation of energy in what is known as the loop rule. If you measure the potential at some point in the circuit and follow the loop around the circuit, and when you get back to that point, the potential will be the same. The potential does not change at any given point as the current moves through. So in this example, if we measure the potential on the negative side of the battery, we find zero volts. The potential will rise as we move across the battery, whatever the battery voltage is, in this case 18 volts. The potential drops by IR as we move across the resistor to 17 volts. It stays at 17 volts going into the next resistor before dropping to 5 volts on the other side. It stays at 5 volts as it moves through the last resistor and drops to 0 volts. If you continue to move around, the same thing will happen over and over. So as the battery adds energy into the system, the resistors take it away. And when we get back to the battery, it adds it back in. Writing this mathematically, we can say that the electromotive force is equal to the sum of all of the IR products of each resistor, including the battery and the circuit. We can also put all of those values on one side and set it equal to zero. So all the changes in potential in any given circuit will add up to zero. So find the currents flowing in the circuit. This is a pretty complex circuit, so we can't just come in and apply Ohm's law directly. The currents have been labeled along with their assumed direction, so that's nice. Let's start with the junction rule. Current 1 will be equal to the current 2 added to current 3. Using this rule requires us to label the currents with their direction, and in this case it's been done for us. We could have just as easily turned that first current around and we would have gotten all the same magnitudes just with a negative, and that only tells us direction. At this point, this equation doesn't help us much because we still have three unknowns, but it does give us a goal. So let's consider the loop rule. We actually can define three different loops in this diagram. One loop will follow all around the outside. Another loop will follow from A to B to C to D to E and back to A. The third loop will follow from A to H to G to F to E and back to A. So let's start with loop A, B, C, D, E, A. Going from A to B, we run into resistor 2 that has a resistance of 2.5 ohms. At this section, Ohm's law does apply, so the change in potential across resistor 2 is current 2 times the resistance of 2. It is a negative because we are moving across a resistor in the same direction as the current is flowing. This just means that the potential at the beginning will be higher than the potential after going through the resistor. The next device in the circuit is a battery 1 that has an EMF of 18 volts. Since we are going across the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal, the potential is going to increase, so we will add the EMF of the first battery. We also need to take the internal resistance of the battery into account. This will cause another drop in potential according to Ohm's law, so we will subtract the product of the current 2 times the little r1. Going from D to E in our circuit, we have one more resistor with a resistance of 6 ohms. Now if we back up a second and look at that junction, we will see that current 2 is adding to current 3 to form current 1 across resistor 1. So the potential again drops across resistor 1. So that completes the first loop in our circuit. Now remember according to the loop rule, all of the potential changes will equal 0. So we can plug in what we know. This doesn't look too much different, but if we keep our label straight, we can see that there are some things that we can do here. We can factor out current 2 from a couple of those expressions, and we can plug in the value for our EMF. This leaves us with an expression with only two variables. So while it might not look like we have made much headway, 
that's okay because we're going to leave this here for a second and come back to it. Now for the second loop, loop A, E, F, G, H, A, for this loop we start again at the junction labeled A. I personally like to keep all of my loops going in the same direction if at all possible. It really doesn't make any difference as long as you're a character to keep track of all the signs. As we move from A to E, we cross resistor 1, still with a resistance of 6 ohms. Notice that we cross in the direction opposite the current flow, so our potential on the E side is going to be higher than the potential on the A side. This means that our potential drop will be positive I1, R1. When we get to the junction, we will turn right and go through resistor 3 with a resistance of 1.5 ohms. Again, going against the current here, so the IR drop will be positive. Notice that the current moving through this resistor is the one we've labeled as current 3. This brings us to the internal resistance of battery 2. Again, since we are going against the current, we will have a positive change in potential going in that direction. And finally, to the second battery with its voltage of 45 volts. Notice we are moving from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, so the electromotive force will be negative in this case. Conservation applies to this loop as well, so we can plug in our variables and factor out. Then we can add in those actual values and simplify. All right, now we have an expression for the second loop and we have an expression for the third loop. A little bit of rearranging and we can make that a little bit more obvious. We can then reduce those numbers just a bit and get that second current without a coefficient. Then we can do the same thing for our second loop by solving for current three. Notice we have an expression for the first current in both of those. This is good because when we go back and look at the junction rule that says current 2 added to current 3 will give us the magnitude of current 1. So we can plug in our expressions for current 2 and current 3 and combine terms. This gives us a current of 4.75 amperes through current 1. Substitute this into the equation for the second current and we find a value of negative 3.50 amps. Same thing with our third current equation and we find 8.25 amps.